Frame by framing animations for your favorite movies or games is a great way to learn how to be a better animator. And you're probably doing it right now. In this tutorial though, we're gonna take it one step farther by bringing those pro level shots into Maya and reverse engineering them. Let's begin. Step one is find a simple animation for your favorite movie or game. And the keyword here is simple. Uh, you can go to YouTube, Vimeo, or even search through, uh, you know, a digital copy of yours to find a simple shot that's worth practicing for your skill level. And in this case here, I'm just going to go on YouTube and search for Iron Man versus the Black Order. And let's say I just take this top clip and I'm pretty sure this has the type of clip that I like. So this covers like the whole opening fight in New York. And I think it's towards the end. Yeah, right here. There's the really, this simple jump right there. That anticipation and jump is the shot I'm looking for. So I found my clip and now I'm gonna study it frame by frame. If you don't have a favorite animation of mine, that's fine. Just take your time searching for something short and simple. Step two download and save the clip. There are a lot of ways that you can save a clip. You can screen record with software like Camtasia. You can use a YouTube premium account just to download it straight from YouTube, or you can use sites like VidPaw or Ace Thinker to download from YouTube uh, or other sites as well. Um, in this case here, I'm just gonna use VidPaw uh, by copying and pasting the link. And then it gives me the option to download the clip at whatever size uh, that I prefer. I can just say download this and then boom, I'm now downloading that clip and I can edit that a little bit if I want to, you know, um, to just trim down to that one section that I wanted to focus on, which is probably what you should do if it's a, if it's a really big clip or you can just kind of leave it all in there. And that will take us to the third step. Step number three is study it frame by frame. Now we're going to study this clip to figure out the key parts of the animation. To do this, we could use QuickTime, Keyframe Pro, or just drop the clip straight into Maya. Um, but I'm gonna use SyncSketch here. Uh, SyncSketch makes it easy for me to scrub the animation and draw over the shot, make any notes that I, mental notes that I wanna make before I get into Maya. And if you don't have a, an account, it's free to just make one up right now and start putting the clip in. So, First, I'm just gonna upload the video that we have by dragging and dropping it into this project folder. Then I'm gonna at least mark the extremes. These are usually, you know, the changes in direction and for this shot, the first pose, you know, where he's turned away is where, is, is one, is where I, where I start. It's a key pose that I need. Then when he moves left, and really turns and opens up to camera. He goes down to anticipate for the jump and then the top of the jump. These are all really big changes of direction. The uh, turn away, moving left, going down, jumping up. These poses are the ones that I'm gonna spend the most time on getting right in Maya so that the overall action is very clear as far as what's happening and it's as appealing as it can be. From here, it wouldn't hurt to start studying the shot more and maybe make some draw over notes for yourself, like where there's a shape change in the arm, uh, which leg the character's weight rests on, and how the torso rotation changes, you know, as he's jumping through the air. Taking time to study the shot before you animate, it really helps you wrap your head around uh, what's happening because you didn't plan and create this shot first. Um, and, and also what like is happening mechanics wise and how you can go about creating that uh, when, you, when you start your animation workflow. Once you're ready, you can download the movie file again, but with the sketches this time that you made in case you want them, or if you, can pref if you prefer, you can just uh, upload the, the clean video uh, without sketches in straight into Maya. 
uh, it's your choice. But I find this workflow really helpful for just getting my head in, in the right space for animating. Step four, we import the video as reference straight into Maya. First, you'll want to bring in your character rig and create a ground, you know, with some simple geo like a cube that I've done here already. Um, and this will set you up to animate, but it will also help you see where the camera needs to be for the type of shot that you're practicing. Next, let's bring that reference in. We're gonna go up to the Create tab, go to Free Image Plane, then pull up the Attribute Editor with Control A, and make the type Movie, and source the video. So just find the video wherever you had it saved and source it. Now we have an image plane that we can move and resize uh, anywhere we want within Maya. So it's very easy to, to kind of check back to the reference as you're animating. Another way that you could do this is by attaching the reference to the camera itself. Instead of it being a free image plane, we can have it attached to the camera everywhere it goes. Um, so to do this, we're gonna take like the perspective camera here, go to the view tab, image plane, and then movie and then just source the movie. So for this particular situation, I just like to have the free image plane so that I can move it around and look, use multiple cameras to see the animation that I'm trying to, you know, reverse engineer and study a bit more. Now that said, we should also create a new camera. So we'll go to panels, perspective and new. This camera will be our shot camera. So let's rename it shot cam. Um, the point of this camera, you know, is to match the angle of our reference like it's the actual movie camera. You know, like when we're watching Avengers, uh, the angle of the camera and what we're seeing in it. And in this case, you know, it's tilted down, it's looking down and it's a little bit of a distance from, from uh, Cole here, uh, this alien. And he's gonna jump really close to the camera. So we need to kind of figure out that space of how far it is away from him and just kind of play around with that distance a little bit with the character rig in there and our reference as a guide. And in the end, this is the camera that you want to animate everything to. Everything should look appealing to this camera angle. Uh, it doesn't have to look appealing to like the side camera or something like that, but this is the one that we, you know, you want to aim for looking good uh, at all times. And because we've made it a separate camera, we can also just lock that camera down by clicking this lock button here. Um, so we don't move it around accidentally. Once we find the position of the camera that we like, we can keep it just stuck there uh, in, in the right spot and never have to worry about moving it about as we're animating. Step five, recreate the animation for practice only. This is not for demo reel shots. Gotta, gotta put that warning out there. This is just for practice. But this is the step where the fun really begins. So with your reference character and your camera all in the scene already, you're good to start animating. So now you can pretend that you're, you know, you're working on Avengers, Incredibles, Last of Us, and this is the shot that you've been given to do for the week on the job at the studio. Right? If you can, your goal is to take the shot through all the stages of animation. So blocking, blocking plus, refining and polish. So that you can internalize, you know, animating at this level, whether it's VFX or feature or, or some game that, you know, you wish you worked on. Um, you can internalize what kind of level of work they're doing and see how much you can, how close you can get to it. Um, and I'm not gonna go through obviously all the stages of animating this here. I'm just kind of showing you like a few keys of me starting the process out and I'm going back to that reference again and again and thinking, okay, are the hips going down here? Where's the weight? You know, what is the, the pose shape? How does the spine curl in and in, in and out? And what are the angle changes of, of the poses and, and those kinds of things? Um, so you have your reference right here as your cheat, cheat sheet. Uh, to see how dynamic your pose is, how much to push the weight and the power, and to see how far, uh, you know, to take the quality of the animation. Like when you're, basically you're just gonna compare back and forth the animation you're making and the reference that's right in front of you and see how close it is. And even if all you do is go through the blocking, you will learn something. You will internalize something about 
posing, timing, spacing, one of a million different things that can help you. So if you practice like this once in a while, you'll get to a pros level much faster than just doing random exercises on your own. What do you think? Is that cool? If you like this tutorial, then subscribe and ring the bell for more just like this in the future. Um, and now I have a challenge for you. I want you to go and try this out for practice only sometime this week. And let me know what one new discovery, lesson, insight, whatever it is that you had about animating along the way. It doesn't matter how good your animation is or if you only make a few key poses, uh, simply giving this a go will teach you something. And it's a lot different than just watching a lecture and saying, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just frame by framing a shot and be like, oh, they did that there. No, this is really putting you to the test and seeing if you can, you know, if you can match up to the kind of studio work that you wanna do and get paid for. Um, so it really challenges you to another level and, uh, and it, it makes you learn faster because you're hands on. So are you up for the challenge? Let me know, leave a comment below. Let me know you're gonna you know, try this out and say, yeah, I'm in for the challenge or yeah, I can't wait to start or I'm already, I'm already in it. And until next time, happy animating.